Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Comic Book Corner, and this is your host Spider Slayer. Today we're getting ready to do another Walking Dead Rewind. That's right guys, we're rewinding it all the way back, and I'm reviewing all the issues of The Walking Dead. So with that being said, we're going to get started, and we're going to review issue number... Four of The Walking Dead. That's right. This is a pretty kick-ass cover here. Um, you can pretty much see that Rick is holding a gun and the blood is dripping down the barrel of the gun with the zombies going in for the attack. Um, this is an awesome cover and the action starts heating up in this issue. Um, in the beginning of the issue, there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of talking, but it all leads into a very high paced action um, event that takes place and this issue goes almost identical with the TV show at this point in time um, at least in one scene in regards to that um, but with that being said we know that Robert Kirkman is the writer and the creator of The Walking Dead and Tony Moore does the artwork in this particular book um, but in our last issue, we saw the camp get attacked by a zombie for the first time, really. And Dale kind of saved Donna's life by slicing the zombie's head off. Um, and as Rick and Shane came running to the camp, um, Lori looked for Rick for comfort and Shane was left all alone. So already we can see... The hinges starting to come undone by Shane. So with that being said, we're going to get started and we are going to review issue number four. Okay, so issue number four, I told you where we last left off. In the beginning of this particular issue, what we see here is we see Rick and we see Shane having a conversation about how this particular area is not safe and how the camp is not safe anymore uh, based off of what they say is yesterday's or today's attack on Donna and then they're saying how uh, how Rick is saying how she could have gotten killed and Shane is basically arguing the fact already they're not getting along is that they think he thinks that they should stay there that the government is um, that the government is going to come and rescue them and how are we going to be you know rescued if we're going to be hiding in the woods and all of that stuff so they're basically being pretty loud here so you can see it's kind of a heated argument because you know Dale comes out and he goes you know what quiet guys we're trying to sleep here so you can see that there's a conflict already starting to brew between the two guys and after the dispute that goes on, Rick decides, okay, Shane, you're right, we'll go we'll do it your way, you know, but the group needs to be safe, so we need to go and we need to go get guns. So Rick here is talking with Glenn and he's discussing that, you know what, let's go get some guns, we need to go into the city, you know, who would know where there's a gun, sh a gun shop? And Glenn's like, well, basically Jim would know. So they go right to Jim over here and um, Jim knows exactly where there's a gun shop because he's kind of lived in the city and um, there is a brief description about Jim how his whole family got killed in Atlanta and he was the only one that escaped alive because the zombies were just devouring his family. Um, so after a brief discussion of that and after another brief discussion with Rick and Lori, how Lori doesn't want Rick to go away because she only he only got back three days ago, he says, you know what, 
I need to go with Glenn. We need to find guns. We need to camp safe. We need the group protected. You know, Rick promised uh, Carl a gun, and Lori was, you know, debating about that fact that, you know, why does he need a gun? He's too young. Um, so there's all these little debates, but in the end, Rick and Glenn decide to go into town. They get a map, and they start walking this way. So as a way to figure out a way to survive, Glenn comes up with this idea, and he sees one of the dead zombies, and of course we can see that um, they're dead, and there's the usual flies that are flying around. And Rick comes up with this idea. He says, you know what? They can't really see that well, but somehow they're attracted to his scent. So, maybe what we should do is just hack up the zombies. And the funny thing is, is Rick's like, take a couple hands, take a couple of, you know, body parts and stick them in your pocket, Glenn. You know, like it's like a normal thing to do. Glenn starts puking all over the place. It's just hysterical. And they start rubbing the this stuff all over the place and 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 things like that and it's just it's just so funny um, this is part is a little different than from the TV show because if you remember in the TV show they were already in the city they were already in a shop and what they did was they hacked up the zombies in the shop and rubbed it all over their, their clothes all the guts but here you can see Glenn and Rick are covered and they got all the zombie guts all over them, and Glenn just continues to puke all over the place, which I thought is just completely hysterical. And they make their way back um, to Atlanta to go to the gun shop. Um, as the story continues, you can see that they test out their new, you know, new camouflage, if you want to call it, against the zombies just sitting there, and it really doesn't do anything to them, it just knocks their hand away. So as they see that they're, you know, making their way towards the city, they're going deeper and deeper, they see more zombies, they find out how bad the city actually is. There's just a ton, a ton of uh, zombies just lying around. You can see that the tank where the soldiers are. I mean, there's just all kinds of mayhem that was created in the city, and the government just did not do anything to help the situation. In fact, they probably just made it worse. Um, so finally they're in the depths of the city. Glenn and Rick get a shopping cart to go collect as many guns as they possibly can. So they start collecting guns and they bring it and they put it into a shopping cart here and they start heading out. Um, there's the shopping cart. Next thing we see is that it is starting to rain and Rick takes his little hatchet which in this part Hold on one second. This, instead of the little hatchet that I just showed you in the book, this is what Rick uses in the TV show. He uses the big axe to hack the zombie right in the brain um, while it's raining and the guts is running off of their bodies. Um, so that was kind of like a major difference there from the comic to the actual a uh, TV show, so I thought this was pretty cool to show you guys um, while it was raining them trying to escape out the city. Um, so as the as the two are trying to escape and they hatchet their way through the city and through the zombies, they're running with the shopping cart here and they're trying to escape and the zombies keep attacking. You know, Glenn falls over with the shopping cart of guns, and the guns go flying everywhere. And they quickly get up and try to escape. Rick gets bit, but it doesn't penetrate through his jacket. So he gets lucky, but he starts freaking out. He starts hacking, starts shooting. You can see the panic on his face. The facial expressions are just so intense in this particular novel and or in this issue. And he's just going crazy, and Glenn's just like, Come on, I think we're going to make it. We're going to go. We're going to make it. And they keep going. And they finally escape. And they're just like, okay, we made it. And he's like, oh, geez, let's just stop for a second. got to catch my breath. And he realizes, Rick realizes now that he's not bit. In the other side, back at camp, Lori is just anxiously waiting Rick 
to come back and Shane is just trying to comfort her saying you know Rick took, can take care of himself he's come back before he'll come back it's just not worth waiting out in this rain and uh, you know come back to camp it's cold outside and she's just like um, Shane you just have to stop this and in this last page we see well what about the night when we on the road and we all know what they did because the same thing on the TV show is that Lori and Shane hooked up and it's clear on this page that that's what they did in the comic as well because Lori says that night and she's in disgust and she's just in a sigh and then she just says that night was a mistake that's right and then Shane holds his head down low as oh shit now I'm not a part of her life anymore so and that ends issue number four the story um, at this point is, you know, there's differences, but there's a lot of similarities to the show and to the comic at this point. Um, the whole guts thing, you know, them going into the city to get guns, that's all the same. The whole situation with Lori and Shane, that's all the same. A little bit different, you know, on the comic side because you can't, you know, describe everything in the comic as compared to the show. But, you know, going back and reading this, again, just brings back great memories, and um, it's still, the story holds up to today, and I, again, I continue to enjoy it just as I much did when I read it so long ago. So, that was issue four, um, stay tuned for issue five coming up soon, and that's going to be a, a good one. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the review and walkthrough of The Walking Dead Issue 4. And thanks for watching Comic Book Corner. And until the next comic book review, this is Spider Slayer signing out. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.